first now we want to go to Charles Krauthammer, uh, who I believe is standing by in Washington tonight. Um, Charles, there's okay. other news. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining us. There's, there's of course, other news today, and that's the American Health Care Act has passed the House of Representatives. And for those just joining us, I want to say that we, we will go to the event with the President and the Australian Prime Minister uh, when it begins. But, Charles, how significant is this that this bill has passed the House? Well, I mean, for political reasons, for the President and for Speaker Ryan, this was uh, a really very important moment, uh, simply on the negative side. Had it not, right. uh, that would have been a striking out. You know, the, the Republicans have railed against the F Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, for seven years. They promised. They voted over 60 times to repeal when they knew that the repeal would be ineffective because Obama was in office. And now that they have a Republican in office, they're not able to pass a bill. So simply the fact of passing the bill, I think, is extremely important because of the downside. Right. The problem is what's in the bill. And the problem is that we have a very rickety health care system as a result of Obamacare. And it's very hard to predict what the effects are going to be. But the one thing we know is this is like the economy. You come into office, you own the economy, no matter whether it's your, your work or not, whether anything is a result of what you do. You come into office, you own the health care system, right. particularly when you pass something like this. I mean, if you have an appointment with your doctor that gets canceled, they're going to blame Donald Trump and Paul Ryan, no matter whether it has direct effect or not. And that's where they are now. They are hostage to the future of American health care. Would they have been anyway? I mean, you, you heard some Republican strategists in Washington say, do nothing, allow Obamacare to collapse, stand back, warm your hands on the embers, and then build something in its place. Was that yeah. possible? No, it's not possible. Right. The, the moment the president is sworn in, he owns the health care system. It's not fair, it's not logical, but it doesn't matter. People attribute whatever's happening to the administration, particularly when you control the House and the Senate, and particularly when you've campaigned for years and garnered the political benefits of going against Obamacare and promising a replacement. Yes. So they've owned it one way. They had no choice, but they are now hostage to the results of a bill whose, whose outcome, ultimate outcome on the ground, is extremely hard to predict. And it's legislative outcome as well. I mean, are we certain, I guess a compound question, this is going to get through the Senate? And are we sure that it's a, a good bill? Something I think will get through the Senate, but it may not look very much like the House bill. The, the House right. bill is essentially dead on arrival to be revived when something else comes out of the Senate and goes to a House-Senate conference committee where they will try to work out a compromise. The Senate essentially on, is on its own now. And it's going to have to find a compromise that is less radical than the House bill because of the political math of the Senate. You have only two votes to spare. You've got a lot of moderates who are not very happy, Republican moderates. And then you've got the radical fundamentalists like Rand Paul who want to treat health care like another commodity in a country that is not anywhere near that anymore. Right. Less than it ever has been. Um, the, the debate in the last couple of days has been over the pre-existing conditions clause in Obamacare, reviled by libertarians, but right. popular with a lot of the public. That sacrosanct at this point can't go anywhere, do you think? Absolutely sacrosanct. I think what conservatives and Republicans are beginning to understand is how the fundamental view of health care among the American people has changed. Obamacare is a disaster on the ground. Yes. What it's done to our system, what it's done economically, it's in a death spiral, and politically it ruined the Democrats. However, there's an irony and a hidden victory here. Over these last seven years, people's expectations have changed. You watched the debate over the last three months, Dr. Yes. Tucker. What are the grounds? The grounds are all liberal grounds. How many people are going to lose their coverage? How can you leave people out in the cold? the Jimmy Kimball thing. It's showing that the country is at a point where I think it believes in universal coverage. And once you are there, the ground is shifted and Republicans and conservatives are going to have a hard time arguing for a consumer-based, market-oriented right. health care system. We're in a different world. Where health savings accounts may not be popular to the majority. I saw a piece this week yeah. entitled The Conservative Case for Single Payer. 
I'm not sure most conservatives are quite there yet, but you think that's where it's going? I think that's where we're going. Whether it'll end up single payer, you know, like on the Canadian system or not, I'm not sure. But I will guarantee you this. Within a few years, there won't even be an argument about whether or not government has an obligation to ensure that everybody gets health coverage. That's what the Democrats wanted all along. They weren't quite ready to pull the trigger in 2010, so they ended up with this hybrid system, this rickety system, yeah. which is not self-sustaining. But the idea, I think, has now sunk in. It's also bewildering. Things are changing really fast. We're glad you're here. Charles Cardhammer, thank you. My pleasure.